Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe. Uh, so we're bit coming back with some more uh, Throne of Eldraine uh, initial brews deck list ideas, some archetypes I'm going to be playing as soon as I can get the cards come Thursday. Um, so this one here is a Black White's Knights list. So I know I posted one on YouTube. I mistakenly named it. It was supposed to be Abzan Midrange, which was the video. So here's the actual deck for Black White Knights. Uh, I got mixed up when I was uploading them. Uh, so Knights itself got a lot of support. We lose some key cards like History of Benalia, um, but we get a lot of support uh, cards for the Knights archetype. And there's also a lot of cards that happen to be Knights that fit around with this. So in the one drop slot, we have Knight of Eben Legion. I feature this in quite a few decks already. Uh, so this is a one mana, one two that scales to the late game as a mana sink, gets death touch, gets bigger. Really strong creature in the one drop slot. Pretty much all my black mid-range decks are playing some number of these. Uh, Worthy Knight is another card. So this is kind of the young pyromancer uh, hero of Precinct 1, but this one cares about knight spells. So whenever you cast another knight spell, uh, you create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. So a little annoying that it doesn't create more knights, but in itself, it's a way for us to go wide and create an army of attackers. Uh, Smitten Swords Master. Uh, so this is a card that would kind of be our closer in a way, but at times can also be our uh, early drop. So it's a useful card in that sense. So Adventure I featured, uh, I've explained it in a couple other videos, but effectively when you have it in your, your hand, it can be cast as a split card. You can either cast it as a two mana, two one life linker, or you can first cast it for its adventure cost, in this case one black mana. If the spell resolves, it goes into like a special exile, at which point then you can cast it uh, as a creature half later in the game. Uh, so its adventure is called Curry Favor. Uh, it's a one black mana to cast, and you gain X life, and each opponent loses X life, where X is the number of knights you control. So if we make a big army with a worthy knight, you can always cast this to kind of drain your opponent of some life. So think of it almost as... Uh, a Grey Merchant of Asphodel from the old mono black devotion lists. Um, so then we're playing three Midnight Reapers. Um, so this is kind of, we're creating a lot of creatures, so if they die we can draw some cards so we're not as weak to board wipes. Um, I'm noticing with this deck we've got quite a bit of three drops, so may want to look at some other two drops, but that's after we play some games to see how the deck plays out. Uh, three drop wise, Got a couple Gideons, it's a way to give our stuff lifelink, indestructible, vigilance, kind of attack through. It's also a body in itself that uh, gets around board wipes, and it's minus six can deal troublesome permanence. So it's kind of uh, an aggressive threat that can also serve as removal. Uh, Oath of Kaya's, I'm playing four of. Uh, we're an aggressive deck, so it's effectively a three mana burn spell at times. Uh, it can also be used as removal and then help skew the race. Uh, if we're doing against other aggressive decks, we can gain some life and deal with one of their creatures. Um, because we're not playing the any red in this deck, um, we don't have the uh, two mana Lord. So I'm trying uh, Icon of Ancestry. Um, so this card here, we name it as Knights, gives all our stuff plus one one. And I like this one over the six mana artifact that costs less. Um, because this one will actually give us pseudo card advantage where if we get board wipes or we're drawing a lot of lands we can just pump three mana into it and then try to find a creature spell that way. Uh, then we have a claimed contender. Uh, so this is another card advantage spell uh, for the deck. Uh, so this kind of keeps us flowing like we're an aggressive deck but we could drop our hand and then we could refill. So a claimed contender when it enters the battlefield if you control another light, a knight Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a knight or equipment or legendary artifact. Really, we're just playing um, knights in this case and then put it into your hand. So it's basically a creature that finds more creatures for our knights. Uh, four of Murderous Riders. Uh, this card is probably, in my opinion, one of the best cards in the set. It's the adventure of Hero's Downfall. So destroy target creature or planeswalker at instant speed, losing two life. Then you get a 2-3 lifelinker that shuffles back into your library when it dies. Or sorry, puts it at the bottom. Uh, three Sorns. Uh, lifelink in, this, in it could target Planeswalkers or your opponent with the plus. But mostly it's a way to recycle our creatures. When they die, we could bring them back. So for example, 
if your acclaimed contender dies, you can bring it back with Soren and then draw a card. So it's kind of just reoccurring value to try to grind out your opponent's one for one removal. And then two Cavalier of Knights. Uh, I like Cavalier. Um, in the early game, you can, or when you cast it, you can sack a creature to serve as removal. Um, similar to uh, like how we have Gideon that can serve as removal or Knight of Even Legion. And then when it dies, you get to bring back any creature with converted mana cost three or less, which is basically any creature in our deck that's in the graveyard. So it's useful that way. Uh, mana base wise, uh, we actually have four sets, uh, sorry, three sets of duels. We have Gala Shrine, we have Temple of Silence, and we have Training Grounds. So Training Grounds is specific to knights. You can cast uh, spend this mana only to cast knights or equipment spells. Of note, you can't cast adventure spells with it, um, but it is a way for us to fix our mana because we do have some instances of, well, it's mostly double block and triple block, but it can help fix our mana that way. Otherwise, playing swamps, and then I got a couple castles. I really like these cards, actually. Uh, so castle, Ardenvale, uh, just creates 1-1 one -one tokens uh, when we need to. They're humans, not knights, but in case of like multiple board wipes, we can deal with it that way. And then Castle Lockwaint is a card draw spell stapled onto land, so it's good value in the long run. Man, uh, sideboard wise, so sideboard, I don't hold too much weight right now because we still don't know what the meta, but these are some of the cards I'd probably initially play. Um, Duress versus like Control or like heavy mid range matchups. Sorcerer's Fly Gas against Planeswalker decks. Legion's End against either Golos decks or Hydroid Crisis Voracious Hydro decks, or even just like Aggro. Uh, Noxious Grasp, there's going to be a lot of green stuff, so deal with that. We're playing a full four of. Uh, Glass Casket versus Aggro decks. Uh, this is basically a way to exile creatures with CMC 3 or less. And then just card advantage spells versus the mid range mirrors or control. Bolus of Citadel, we gain a lot of life in the deck through Soren or Othakaya or the. What's his name? Gotta learn the name still. Smitten Sword Smith. That one is a tongue twister. Uh, but Bolus of Citadel, we can just kind of play a lot of spells in one turn. And then a Liliana just as a way to, when our creatures die, we can get some value there. If we resolve this against control, they likely don't bring in Planeswalker removal against us, so we can deal with them that way. So that's pretty much my first take of the deck. Uh, it is a little bit pricier of a deck uh, with 44 rares and 5 mythics for Arena, uh, but some of them are from older sets, so you might already have them. Uh, really, you're looking at 4 rares here, 4 rares here four rares there yeah that's pretty much it so 12 rares from the new set all the other stuff's older so you might already have it and then the lands it's about 20 new rares um, so that's pretty much the deck um, i'll be back with a couple other decks as always if you have any requests i can be working on a mono red a uh, either stompy green or green splash red stompy list i want to build a mill deck there's a few others that i'll be putting up on the site on Aetherhelp, you can find all the deck lists here. So if you just go MTG Joe, you'll see all my deck lists with the ELD tag. Uh, these will all be for the new set. So I'm going to try to do a deck tech for each of these. Um, but if I miss any of them, you can just find the deck list here. And then one last thing, if you are planning on purchasing cards for this new set of Throne of Eldraine and Paper, and you're considering using TCG Player, I do have an affiliate link in the video description down below. If you click that link and do your purchase as you normally would, it just lets them know that I sent you uh, from the site, and it is a way to help out the channel uh, without having to pay anything. You don't have to sub, anything like that. It's just a normal purchase. You get your cards, but you can help out the channel. So if you could do that, that'd be great. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and if you have any recommendations or comments on the decks, feel free to drop it below. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.